Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Attribute Slicer. Now, the Attribute Slicer is a really interesting way to be able to filter your data down. It kind of combines the capabilities of a chart and a slicer together in a single visual. It allows you to have a value or a measure that you want to be able to analyze. So in this case, you can see things like maybe perhaps the quantity of sales of these items on the chart that's showing in the uh, visual on the right-hand side. But really, the way that you interact with this visual is as a slicer. So as you select these items, it filters down other parts or other visuals that you have on your report. The nice thing is, as you select those items you want to filter, it also places them into an applied filters list. So you can clearly see where and what you have filtered on this visual. So it's a nice way to do this. You'll also see there is a search area in the top, so you can easily find a, through a list of values that you have. If you want to find one particular value, you can use the search capabilities here to find them. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into how you can use the attribute slicer. We'll first demo where to go find it, which, by the way, has actually changed recently. We'll also show you where to go download and how to implement it inside of the Power BI desktop. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing that's actually been a change here is the Power BI custom visuals have moved. They're uh, still available as of right now in the visual gallery if you go to visuals.powerbi.com, but they're also have been, they have also been moved to the Office Store now. So if you go to store.office.com, you'll find that the Power BI custom visual gallery is now available here as well, where you can actually find the visuals that you would normally find elsewhere. Why do they make this change? Well, because Power BI is kind of being wrapped into the other Office products here and the add-ins that you can find will be available here underneath the Power BI section on the left-hand side. So it's kind of integrated in with the other Office products. So if you go to, again, store.office.com, on the left-hand side, if you select Power BI, you'll find a list of the custom visuals that are available to you. And if you want to get a full list of them, you can come down here to the bottom where you see See More Apps. And if you select See More Apps here, you can get a list of all of the apps, and you can kind of scroll through and uh, find the ones that are available here. They're still migrating many of them over as of the point that I've recorded this. And the one that we're going to use in this case, if I hit next, is going to be the attribute slicer. Now, I could have certainly searched for it as well. If I searched attribute slicer, that would have helped me find it. But I'm going to go ahead and select the attribute slicer here and then choose to add the app. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and download it. So you'll see select to download, and that'll download the attribute slicer for me. All right. So the attribute slicer has now been downloaded. It gives you some instructions on how to use it here as well. But let's go ahead and walk you through these steps on our own together. So I'm going to go flip over to the Power BI desktop now. And as I do that, we're going to start by bringing in our data. Now, the data that we're going to be using in this case is going to be a, a list of words and the frequency that those words are used. So we're going to be see the, seeing the, the frequency of these words and how often they're used in the English language. So we're going to start by doing that. To do that, we're going to go up to the Get Data section here. We're going to select Excel where our data is located. And you'll be able to find where this data is available in our Example here, if you look below, you'll find a link. You can also find it if you've downloaded the class. And uh, we're going to look under the data section here and find the word frequency and select open. With that selected, that's now going to allow us to import some data in from this, this workbook. So I'll select, uh, select this word spreadsheet in the word frequency Excel workbook. And then I'll hit load. This will now bring this data into the Power BI desktop, and we can then import our custom visual and start to use it. Before we bring in the custom visual, I'm going to go ahead and place some of this information on a basic table here so we can kind of get a view of what the data looks like. So I'm going to bring in the, uh, the rank and I'm going to change it instead of aggregating that. I'm going to tell it to do not summarize the rank. Just give me a list of the rank. Show me the word and the frequency that it appears. Okay. And I'll bump up the text size of this a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Okay. That'll be under the general section here actually. There we go. And so I can see a list of the words. Which ones are most frequently used? The, B, and, of, to, a, and. Those are the most frequent words that are used here in the English language. And I'll leave that over here so we can see how the attribute slicer works with it. So next we want to import the attribute slicer. So I'll do that by going to the ellipses here underneath the visualizations pane. And I'll select import a custom visual and select import. Then we're going to go over to underneath the custom visual section here, which you just downloaded a few moments ago. You're going to open and use the attribute slicer that we just downloaded and hit open here. That's now imported the custom visual and we should be able to place that now. You can see it appear in the visualizations pane. We can now place that into, oops, let me undo that. We can now place by dragging and dropping that, or just selecting off the table, and uh, we'll now place that into our visual here, our design surface. So I've got the attribute hierarchy here, the attribute slicer, and what I can do with this now is I can place into it the category and the value. So the category is going to be, in this case, the word. That's the list of values that you want to filter by. And then the value is going to be a representation of, in this case, the frequency. So it's some kind of measure that you want to be able to analyze. So here I'm using the 
frequency as the measure that I want to use to show graphically how many uh, occasions or units there are of a particular word. But this could be a product, it could be anything that you want to be able to filter on. Now the way that the attribute slicer works is you simply select on value. So if I select on and here for example, you'll notice that it adds it to the filter section here, the applied filter section. And you'll also notice that it appears on the right hand side. You can select multiple items here. So I can add, select as and 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 be and at. And you can see they all appear here in the selected or applied filter section up in the top. And they also apply any filters that we have done here to any other item inside of the report. If you want to clear a filter, you can hit clear all or you can hit X on these individual filters. Clear all just removes them all. And you can also use the little frequency by word search to allow you to find the words that you want to filter here. So if I want to filter something like, uh, let's filter out because, I can select because, and you can see that because returns back, and I can select that to be my filter, and then it's filtering just because. If I wanted to, I can type in something like can, and there's probably multiple words like American and can that have those letters in it. So I can select both of those if I wanted to, to apply them to my filter as well. So it's kind of a nice, easy way to be able to filter your data and also see some kind of measure associated with that filter here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit clear all to remove that filter. And let's take a look at a few of the things that we can do underneath the format paintbrush section here to the attribute slicer. So I'll select the attribute slicer, then go over to the format paintbrush. And we'll find underneath the general section here, you have things like increasing the text size, which of course is very helpful. You can also do things like turn on or turn off this option here called show options. And basically that removes or hides this top section here. So if I uncheck or turn off the show options option, you'll notice here that it just removes that. You can still apply filters if you wanted to, but you won't really be able to see that uh, applied filter section. So I really actually prefer to have that on. Just want to show you that is a capability that you can turn off if you wanted to. You also have some things underneath the dis display section here. Underneath the display section, you can increase the width of the display that's being used here. So the value that you're seeing right now, it's taking up 66% of the time, the space that I have. I could bump that up to something like 75% if I wanted to. And by doing that, you can see it takes up a little bit more space in the visual uh, perspective here. You can also change this to present horizontally if you wanted to. So if you check on horizontal, that changes the perspective to more of a horizontal view where you can kind of see this as from a different perspective. It still works the same way. You can still select values here to filter. It just has a different way of looking at it. You also have some things you can change as far as the display units. So if you want to change the display units, you can change that here from auto to any other kind of display units that you want. So if you want to see this formatted as thousands, I can select thousands here, for example. And you'll see that it actually displays that uh, hover over value as a K instead of the true value there. You can also change the precision. So if you wanted to change, if you had decimal places here, you can adjust the precision as well. All right, next you have underneath the selection section, a few things that are interesting. You have the ability to make this only available as a single select. So if I turn the single select on, I can only choose one value to filter at a time. So if I select one value, you notice the other value turns off you only are allowed to filter on one value when you turn that option on. So that's one other nice feature that you can turn on, but it's turned off by default. You also have an interesting section here for the brush mode. I really like this. If you select brush mode, that allows you to actually select, click, and drag, and filter multiple values at once. So brush mode is kind of an interesting way to filter data. You can select, drag, and filter a bunch of values at once if you wanted to using brush mode. I really like that feature. The other option here you have is use tokens. If you turn off use tokens, that just basically hides that section up there that shows you what is applied as filters. I really prefer that on. That really gives you a nice display of what you're filtering on. So I prefer to see that there. All right, so that's really it for this one. You saw underneath the general section, display and the selection section, a few things that you can adjust. Underneath the title, background, lock aspect and border, those are a few things that you have underneath basically every custom visual that you've seen so far. So things like underneath the title, you can change the title that's being used here and adjust the text size if you'd like. You have a few things that you can do in here to kind of adjust. But for the most part, those are all things you could do on every single visual that you have inside of Power BI. So that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the attribute slicer and look forward to showing you our next custom visual.